and welcome to another episode of Gov2TV. I'm your host, Walter Schwabe, and I'm here and joined today with a very special guest, John Weigelt, who's the National Technology Officer for Microsoft Canada. Hello, John. Good morning. How are things in Ottawa, Canada today? Well, things are moving right along. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, listen, uh, thank you for being on the show. And the reason why I wanted to have you on the show is because uh, one of the things that uh, I wanted to talk about was GovCamp. You know, you and I uh, met each other essentially for the first time in person at a GovCamp uh, last year in Ottawa. We were working with you on that and uh, uh, very excited and happy to do so. And you know, I want to talk a little bit about how this thing is, as a movement has really grown around the world um, and just some of your experiences associated with GovCamp. Can you tell people a little bit more about what GovCamp is and uh, why they'd want to get involved? Well, thanks for that. Uh, GovCamp is something that I'm very excited about. It's an opportunity to change the conversation between individuals, policymakers, and the governments that are delivering services. So it's not just a technology-focused uh, conversation. It's around uh, enhanced service delivery uh, conversation. And it's also around getting and capturing those great ideas that individuals and businesses have to transform how government provides its service. Uh, and so, as you mentioned, we had our first uh, GovCamp uh, that we helped support uh, here in Ottawa last year. Uh, we then uh, extended that to, to Toronto, had a smaller uh, intimate conversation, and then uh, grew that out to uh, this year's GovCamp, which we held in June at the uh, Mars Discovery District in Toronto, where we uh, really had standing room only over 200 people coming in to have a conversation to transform how government uh, sends its services to individuals and businesses across all three jurisdictions. So how is this conversation being received by, you know, the various government agencies that, that, that come out to attend? And, and what kind of questions and maybe conversations are ongoing? Well, you know, there's a, a variety of different people that uh, attend the conversations. We have a very passionate young community, young public servants and uh, young uh, citizens that are looking to make a difference to be re-engaged in democracy. Uh, and so there's, uh, I call them fast neuron conversations that are had with people looking and exploring exciting new opportunities for how services can be delivered through the technology lens, either online through a mobile device uh, or even through cool mashups. We then have uh, the middle tier, which uh, tends to be those people that operate the services or operate the technology. Uh, and they're coming to hear about new ways that they can do their business, new efficiencies. They uh, are warming to the idea. They're uh, sometimes a little bit reluctant to uh, uh, embrace uh, some of the dramatic changes that we see happening online. But uh, they're coming with uh, an open mind and very interested. Uh, and then we have uh, a couple of uh, very, very... Uh, senior level government officials that uh, see this as a tremendous opportunity to change the way that government does its business. And we were quite fortunate to have uh, senior officials come in and kind of bridge between all the communities. Well, you know, speaking about senior officials in, in government, uh, you know, obviously, if you can get decision makers to the table and have a conversation with them and then move that towards action, that's really what it's going to be all about, because the only way you can change the way government does business is through action. Now, I, I mentioned at the beginning here that this is a, a global movement, and I wanted to share with our viewers uh, a video of uh, Finance Secretary John Swinney, who with the Scottish government talks about GovCamp happening over there in Scotland. And it's a, a short video, and we're going to come right back, and we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about that, so stay tuned and, and, and watch this video. GovCamp is an opportunity for the government to work with uh, a major company, in this case Microsoft, to bring together all aspects of the community to discuss what are the opportunities within the digital age. And... It's a great opportunity for Scotland to take a decisive step forward in what's a very important issue of connectivity for the future. The digital agenda is cr critical for Scotland because it gives us an opportunity to reflect on how we can adapt our public services and our structures and methods of government to incorporate the technology advances that all of us are experiencing in our daily lives. And I think the great opportunity for us is to ensure that the approach that we take to GovCamp opens up a debate and a discussion about how Scotland can seize these opportunities uh, to build on them and take forward uh, an ambitious agenda to make Scotland a very well connected country and one that can contribute to the future. 
Connectivity is at the heart of many of the business models that exist for the future and as we look around the, the country, as we engage in discussion with individual companies, it becomes ever more clear the dependence that companies have on effective technology and effective connectivity for the future. So in the digital age, it really doesn't matter where a company is located. The key, the key thing is they must have access to good quality uh, connectivity and as a consequence can use that connectivity, that access to digital communication to strengthen their business proposition in the period going forward. And that's a, that's a, a great strength for individual companies. And it's also a great opportunity for, 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 for Scottish companies because it means that we can overcome some of the challenges of geography that have been an issue for us in the past. Public services can be transformed by the utilisation and the uh, embracing of the digital age. It gives us a, a way of proceeding with many of the challenges of delivering public services to a variety of locations, whether that's the challenge of geography or sparsity of population, or ensuring that we can guarantee access to public services for all members of the public. So there's a lot for the public sector to learn from the GovCamp uh, example and of the opportunities that it throws up for, up for us to transform public services. I hope from GovCamp we have a strong and positive discussion about how across uh, the academic world, uh, the business community, the public sector uh, and the private sector we can take forward an agenda that will make sure that Scotland is well connected, that we incorporate connectivity into our business models and we take forward the agenda in a positive and ambitious way. And if we do that, um, we will be able to ensure that Scotland is a country well equipped for the challenges that lie ahead and one that will prosper as a consequence. So those are very interesting thoughts from Finance Secretary John Sweeney of the Scottish Government. John uh, Weigelt of National, the National Technology Officer for Microsoft Canada here is joining me here on Gov2TV. And John, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what you're seeing now uh, as it relates to the, some of the things that the Finance Secretary was saying there. Uh, on the ground here in Canada, and uh, some, maybe is there something, uh, an anecdote or an opportunity you see for uh, individuals to become more aware of what's going on uh, in Canada as it relates to open government? Well, I think uh, some of the topics that uh, resonated from the finance minister's uh, presentation or discussion was uh, around the ability to project your know-how around the world and to be able to compete uh, from a local region to other regions around the world. And so we as Canadians, we love where we live. Uh, we enjoy our communities. We enjoy the healthcare, the education systems. And so being able then to take our know-how and expertise and project that around the world is very, very important and will stand us for success or get us ready for success as we look towards uh, seizing the opportunity from the digital economy. As we start to look across Canada at some of the sectors where there's innovation happening and great creativity, now one of the places that people sometimes don't look is in the government sector. Uh, and there's been a tremendous momentum within the public sector around uh, open government. I've done a, a quick survey in the open government timeline where I've tried to capture all the high points of, of open government activities uh, going back many years now uh, with the start of publication of data by the federal government. And, and we see the uh, federal government and the scientific communities publishing uh, information. We see the rise of the municipalities with uh, open data announcements and uh, activities. Uh, the provinces coming on board and uh, now there's a minister in uh, British Columbia that has open data, open government as part of their portfolio. And we even see uh, the uh, federal government making uh, strong announcements and proclamations around open government. Supporting that are the many applications. And so many creative people are building applications to show the promise and the value of open data and open government. Uh, and it's much more than simply the applications. It's the philosophy, the principles behind it that help then the community better engage with government. And I really think that's the key theme here is how do you better engage with government through the use of some of these new tools? Well, let's talk a little bit about that. I'm glad that you mentioned that it's more than just the applications, of course, open data and uh, applications and, and a change in culture is where it's at. That's what has to happen first, frankly, and, and I know that you and I have had discussions on this in the past. Let's talk a little bit about tapping into the passion uh, with citizens, because without their adoption of these, you know, new ideas and, and support of them, really open government doesn't really resonate as much and it doesn't get as much traction as maybe as it could. 
uh, because if you don't have citizens going to use these new applications or or this data that's now available or services that are being delivered, it you know it, it's it's almost all for naught. So, tell me about your thoughts as to how we tap into more passion as it relates to citizens and get them fired up about this. You know, uh, I think that's a great question. How do we get people uh, contributing? I, I I love this idea that I call uh, uh, distributed empowerment, where uh, you set a vision that uh, propels people to to act. Uh, and you can almost look at it as the own the podium, where you, you rally the community behind a particular cause. Uh, when I was in the uh, International Data Protection Authority, conference in Mexico City last week, uh, they were asking how do they get bright people to work for the privacy commissioners and for governments uh, uh, around the world. And you do that by giving people cool things to do and then drawing upon their sense of pride within their nation and the sense of being able to give back. I know myself, when I went into uniform in the military, was part of the sense of giving back to, to my neighborhood uh, and being able to have something concrete to do so. And maybe it's something simple, like providing advice to a neighbor as they're uh, going through perhaps a government program for the first time. Maybe it's a business helping another business as it's looking to uh, register for a grant and contribution and simply needs to know the ropes of the way. Uh, these might be activities that are done uh, over coffee. They might be done on a social network. So think of uh, creating uh, some online social network group where people can, uh, can connect or perhaps a wiki where individuals that have gone through particular processes can go help other people. You know, certainly in today's tough economic times, uh, there's the, the difficulties that, that people face uh, perhaps when they lose their job, while others perhaps have gone there beforehand and can you know, lend a shoulder to them to help them along the way and uh, provide them that support when they most need it. Well, those are some great suggestions. And I want to, before we wrap up here, John, I want to direct people to govcamp.ca and, and uh, you know, we'll bring this up on the screen and show folks where they can go uh, to find out more information about GovCamp here in Canada. Uh, is there specific things that you'd like to leave in terms of thoughts um, uh, with people, uh, you know, uh, related to GovCamp and how they can get involved in the next one? Sure. So GovCamp.ca is uh, a landing spot where we can continue that conversation that we have in person. Uh, and so we've managed to capture the videos and the thoughts of uh, the people in the room and, and uh, try to progress some of the activities, things like the uh, Canada, Canada Open Government Timeline are located there. Uh, and so I encourage people to have a look, continue the conversation, share their ideas and look forward to the next GovCamp.ca. Well, listen, thank you so much, John, for being on Gov2TV, and uh, I, I'm glad everything's going great uh, out there in Ottawa. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've, uh, hope you enjoyed our show today. I was joined by John Weigelt, who's the National Technology Officer from Microsoft Canada, and we look forward to seeing you once again on the next Gov2TV. Until then, take care. Thanks so much.